Welcome to chapter six of the Built by Anime podcast with special guest Geekdom101. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this content, he's essentially the go-to resource for Dragon Ball fans. He does such a wide variety of content in the Dragon Ball space, ranging from form guides to analysis, to breakdowns, to news, to philosophy videos. My man is well-versed in the Dragon Ball space. And with the follower base on YouTube of almost 800,000 and almost a decade of time put in, He's the real deal. On this episode, we talk about a range of things, obviously from Dragon Ball to how we get started on YouTube, from Japan to wrestling. It's a pretty awesome episode. So sit back and relax and enjoy chapter six of the Build Up Anime podcast. Um, I appreciate you guys, you being on here. Um, I think a lot of people, when they think about anime YouTubers, your name is usually somewhere in that. Um, I, as one I of the people so. that kind of that have came up and just really been like this uh, kind of beacon for Dragon Ball content specifically, but almost showing some kind of template of, hey, I can talk about a particular IP and really build a fan base or a community around this uh, being a scholar of it or um, a, a resource for the for the show. But has was that always? A thing for you or like did you have different aspirations growing up to want to pursue or still pursuing well i'm i'm a little bit older man i'm 39 so youtube <laughs> didn't exist when i was a kid so i couldn't right. nowadays you got kids say i want to grow up be a youtuber twitch streamer we didn't have that option you know right and one of the things that me and my buddy roberto blake always tell people now and this is an inspirational thing is Mm -hmm. We live in an era now where it has never been easier to start a business and be successful. Now, that doesn't right. mean that it's easy. This is not easy, but like before the internet, you had, if you wanted to run a business, you had to buy like a, an office building or rent one. You had to get staff. You had, and you sometimes still have to do those things. But with the internet, right. You can do everything from home. If you want to do a drop shipping business or even sell merchandise, even if it's not like what we do, if it's anything you can do from home, it was harder to do a work from home business before the internet. It's changed the world. So when I was a kid, I wanted, first I wanted to be a pilot because I love Top Gun, but then I wanted to do uh, IT. And I did do IT for about 10 years. And it's funny because oh, wow. a friend of mine around 2012 was like, Hey, um, I got a YouTube channel. You want to do some content on it? You know, I'll pay you. And I was like, nah, man, I don't really have time. And what happened was during that time, I had a website and, uh, it's no longer up anymore, but it was a website sort of like, it's sort of like the, um, like that guy with the glasses channel, channel awesome, where it was like a lot of different people doing podcasts and video things. And what mm -hmm. happened was one day I woke up and looked at the website and I was pretty disgusted by it because the people were not reliable. This is the unfortunate mm. reality. People just they have their own lives. I'm not saying they're bad people, right. but if, when you have your own life, bro, yeah, the people just weren't reliable. The content wasn't up to speed. So I went on YouTube trying to find and recruit people for the website. That's why wow. I initially went on there. Yeah, yeah. And th this is 2015. Yeah, 2015. And um, I quickly noticed, because I was I couldn't waste a lot of time, I quickly noticed that people in the YouTube space at the time did not quite have the ethics that I wanted. There was a lot mm -hmm. of people that were stealing news, not crediting. The shit, mm -hmm. people still do it now. And I didn't like that. And I wound up actually working with one YouTuber who I won't name, I don't talk to the guy anymore, but he's pretty infamous in Star Wars for being a clickbaiter now. He's not in the anime fandom anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had given him all this Resurrection F information. This is during Resurrection mm -hmm. F's big hype train. He right. publishes it, does not credit the source. He's like, who cares? And that bugged me because I wanted it to be at least a little bit more ethical. I'm, I'm not even saying I'm perfect, but I, that was an important thing to me. So I just woke up one day and I said, you know what, I could probably do it my own self. So I started doing little videos uh, with Movie Maker. I had a rock band microphone, no webcam at the time. People were like, wow. won't show your face because I didn't have a webcam. Oh, that's literally the only reason. Yeah, I had nothing, bro. And I was using either paintbrush or pick monkey to make thumbnails. The cheapest, most low budget thing ever. 
And mm. I remember my when I started doing it, it was it's fun. Like making content is fun. But yeah. I remember my goal was I want to hit 10,000 subs by the end of 2015. So I mm. ended 2015 with 43,000. It, it grew wow. really big for that time. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So what happened was in December of 2015, I was with this chick. I'm not with her anymore. And we lived together. And I came home. I got fired from my job. Wasn't even. <laughs> I wasn't even told why. I think I know why now. But I wasn't told why by the supervisor. So I got mm. cut from my job. And then I came home and I, and I was talking. To, at that point, I had been talking to other YouTubers I had met, such as Quaman, Rhyme Style, Black and Fist. They were kind of here before me. And they right. were like, why don't you just try doing this for a living? And I told her, I said, look, this was my plan. I go, I'm going to try and do this for a living for six months. If in six months my channel does not start making income, I'll go back to IT. Never mm -hmm. went back. So it wow. is what it is. Yeah, that's kind of the story. So I, I, I never wanted to... I never wanted to do this as a kid that didn't exist. But I will say this. There was a change. Originally, Geekdom 101 was called the epitome of geekdom. I quickly mm. learned that, no offense, anime fans can't spell epitome. So I changed it to Geekdom 101. It's a big word. I don't blame them. You know, epitome is, is the way that it writes yeah, out. Epitome, and also, yeah. Epitome. And originally, it was going to be Marvel, Star Wars, and Dragon Ball. And oh, wow. quickly, the Dragon And you can still see those videos on there, the old videos. The Dragon Ball content blew everything else out of the water. I had made contacts in Dragon Ball, both here mm. and in Japan. I had known people. For Marvel, there was already too many content creators that were doing it at a much faster pace and a much better level than me. And mm. for Star Wars, it was the same. There's a lot right. of really good content creators out there. But when it came to Dragon Ball... Now it's different. The game has changed. Mm. And I will say this. This is not an egotistical thing. I know that I'm a big reason the game changed. Prior to me coming around, there was a very small number of content creators that were doing in-depth content on Dragon Ball. Most yeah. of the people doing content, no offense, this is not going to sound, this is not me dissing them, but it was kind of the same thing. Guys yapping on about the dub with very little Japanese knowledge, lots of misinformation, lots of surface level stuff, and they were doing it all over gameplay footage. Every mm. single one. They were a dime a dozen. So I was yeah. looking at this and I was like, okay, no one's talking about these deeper topics. No one's talking about like right. what Toriyama was really thinking about. No one's talking about like the 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 the, the guidebooks. Nobody was doing it except for a couple of smaller channels and they never blew up. And I think part of the reason they never blew up is that they almost lean and I'm friends with 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 one of them. Mm. They leaned too deeply into the how can I put it? I don't want to say weeb, but they leaned too deeply into the otaku mindset. And mm. for me, the reality with me is I would never consider myself a hardcore anime fan. I have a group of anime that I love. I, mm -hmm. I genuinely love the art form, but there are so many anime that I've never seen. I've never seen One Piece. I've never seen Naruto. I hope I don't lose credibility with your audience. I've seen Very One fine. Punch Man. I saw Chainsaw mm -hmm. Man. I grew up with lots of anime like Ranma, Vampire Hunter D, stuff like that. I've seen a lot of it, but there's so much out there, like so much that I just right. never got to see. So, uh, and, and, and the unfortunate thing is like these shows like built huge followings. And yeah. I feel like had I know, had I watched those shows, and become super hardcore into them, I would have had more content. I would have definitely, I would have been a One Piece guy covering every chapter. I would have been a Naruto right. guy. I just never got into it. Not saying I never will, because I've got the entire One Piece manga in the other room, uh, all of yeah. it, up until I think volume, I forget. I got like three boxes full. But the point yeah. is, for Dragon Ball, that was something that I was really passionate about, that I watched since high school. And mm -hmm. I'm because I'm 39, I went to high school in the late 90s, early 2000s, right when the tsunami right. boom happened. And at yep. that time, if you remember, we did not have every 
episode. We were watching the the the, the Saiyan saga and the Namek saga over and over and over and it's again. Repeated. <laughs> and, and it's repeated. And it's so annoying. So, and here's the thing: I went to a high school that was predominantly black and Hispanic. It was about a seventy percent. Hispanic population, twenty percent mm. black population near the hood. Not a lot of not a lot of white kids, but so because of that, I was ingrained in the culture. I loved hip hop. I, mm. I like we just loved it. Wrestling was super red hot during that time. WWF was yeah. getting the, the, and w, ten million viewers every Monday night. They were beating Monday yeah, Night yeah, Football yeah. a couple times. Nowadays, yeah, yeah. Monday Night Football blows them out. But back then. And then Dragon Ball Z, anime too. Like anime was, but Z, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, and Pokemon is the trinity yeah. of like 90s yeah. anime that blew us all up. We had Ronin sure. Warriors and Gundam Wing, but yeah. those were the three. So with Dragon Ball, obviously it connects because it's boys. We're all boys. We all, and the thing that's that, that I love about that era is. I was getting my hands on Dragon Ball Z in three different languages. I had the Spanish version on Telemundo, which aired at 8 in the morning. And then I got my hands. Yeah, and then the Japanese version. What I loved about that era is it's one of those things where, like, you ever heard people say stuff like, you know, I really love that game. I didn't realize it sucked till I got online or that movie. I nobody from that era gave a damn about Goku sounds like a girl in the Japanese version, blah, blah, blah. There wasn't this dub. It wasn't this dub elitism that we see now. They didn't care. We didn't care what language it was in. We wanted to see what happened next. We got cut off at Goku fighting Raccoon. We never saw Goku versus Frieza. We never saw the androids. So then I'm getting these tapes, and I'll never forget this. I will never forget this as long as I live. I got my hands on Trunks versus Frieza, Dragon Ball Z episodes 119 to 121. And... Mm. um. The quality wasn't the best because it was a bootleg from Anime Labs, uh, the old Anime Labs, not the, the well, not the one that's around now, the original piracy Anime Labs. So, <laughs> yeah, I bring this tape into school. I got people come, everyone, including the teacher, was watching this on the, we had a TV in the corner with a VCR. It was VHS yeah. tape. Everyone was watching it completely hooked. They didn't care if it was in Japanese. They didn't care about the subtitles. They did not care. This is something that they had never known existed because Funimation and Cartoon Network took too long. We were very impatient back then. So anything that happened after the dub came out was like a big deal. But nowadays, as you know, an anime will drop in Japan. We'll get... We'll get an, a raw version up in like 10 minutes on the internet on torrent sites. Half an hour, it's on Crunchyroll. Like, you ain't got to yeah. wait. Maybe, 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 maybe a couple hours, it'll be on Crunchyroll. Right. But, but back then, you had to wait years. Years, yep. bro. Same thing with Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon cut off. We had to wait years. And so Bruh. that's really, I think I became a fan of like subbed anime just because the dubbing was too slow for us. You can't give right. us a cliffhanger like that and have us wait years. And that's where the whole thing started. But um, but what I was going to tell you was I became a super hardcore Dragon Ball fan. I was actually, this is going to sound nerdy, I was the president of the Japanimation Club in high school for 11th and 12th grades. I, I have a uh, th- so you know, I have crazy. a pedigree. I have a pedigree with this, bro. And so we watched <laughs> stuff like Akira. You know Akira, mm-hmm. the movie, the yeah. classic. Yeah, we yeah. watched, we watched, um... Dragon Ball, obviously. We watched um, this thing called Galaxy Express 3-9. Like, you know, some of the older anime, but they were still good. Um, They were still fun. And then after Toonami is really when the boom happened in America. I had graduated by then, but there was that second generation of Toonami with Naruto on it, which I remember seeing a little bit of on the commercials. By that point, I was already in college and I had already kind of moved on. But I always Mm -hmm. loved Dragon Ball. And so when the channel started, I 
it's not like I didn't want to cover other anime. It's just that Dragon Ball was like my expertise. Like I knew so much about right. this one series, I could make videos on it. And here we are, bro. Nine years later, I have almost three thousand videos on Dragon Ball, with a few exceptions here and there right. on the channel of like other stuff. But it's it's mostly been Dragon Ball because Dragon Ball's so big. It's just so much bigger yeah. than a lot of the other anime. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so there you it's go. one of those that's, things that's too. Story. Some of the stuff you were talking about is so funny to me because people were like, "You know so much about Dragon Ball," and and what you just said is because the reason is like I saw, I saw it on repeat. I was watch and when it re when it started over, did. I would still watch it back. I would still be there, and it would start over again, and I'd still keep watching it. And so it it like just. I almost memorized the series because I was watching I, it so much. Brother, it's funny because you mentioned that. I, sometimes I'll be on stream and somebody will bring up an episode. Like, like For example, on Goku Day last year, I, w I was on Twitch and I was asking people to pick their favorite Goku moments. They're like, oh, Super Saiyan 3. I go, okay, Dragon Ball Z 245. And the guy goes, how the hell do you know the episode number? I'm like... Cause I'm geeked them 101, bro. I had to, I had to flex, bro. <laughs> what about when when did Gohan kill Cell? Dragon Ball Z 191. Like I just know, like I just know from like mm. you said, watching it over and over and over again. That, that mm. this is years now. This is like a whole lifetime. Yeah. But it's but it's it's funny because yeah, that's that's how it was. We had to, and then and then and then when you discover the Japanese and Spanish versions, because unfortunately Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon and other anime were dubbed in an era where everything was super censored, super chilled out, all the religious sure. references were gone, all of the blood was gone. And the thing is, yep. being a kid, like, I understand now, because I talked to Chris Sabat about it, interview about it, they were scared because they couldn't have any religious, like, hell was became the home for infinite losers. They, right. they took H-E-L-L -L and they raced them to H-F-I-L. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's clever. That's actually pretty genius. Yeah. But, like, when you watch it in Japanese or Spanish, that one was also not censored, and you see the blood, and you see all the scenes they cut out, not even just the blood, yeah. entire sequences were cut out of the dub, it's very yeah. hard to go back to the dub, bro, when you're watching the real dialogue, the real story. And the thing with me is, if you watch anything from Japan that's like this, whether it be like movies or Sentai or whatever, you're going to have like gods and demons. and It's just a thing they do with video games. How Correct. many video games are about yokai, monsters, and demons? It's like a thing they just do. So I, I don't get offended at that maybe some angry mm -hmm. soccer mom who doesn't know any better who's like a one of those like super fundamentalist christians is like oh this is bad for my kid but it's not the same they're, they're not mocking the christian god they have their every universe like beerus is the god destruction he's not mocking the god from the bible their their idea of gods is more like greek mythology Correct. it's not Correct. and it's it, but it's just so silly and I remember when Battle of Gods came out in Japan, we were all thinking, okay, are they really going to call it Super Saiyan God? Because that's they, they, they avoid that word. And they did because by the time mm -hmm. 2013 rolled around, they were a lot more chill about that. So, Isn't that crazy to think about that Battle of Gods came out damn near 11, 11 years, years ago? ago? It's That's crazy. so wild to even think like, Jesus. I remember when that was coming out and we're like, what does a Dragon Ball Z movie come? Like that was like the craziest moment the, for Dragon Ball fans. It was like, that was insanity. Like, what? So and they actually brought it back. We're like, they're going to bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back. They finally, brought, they were rumors. Remember all the fake yeah. rumors out there for years? Oh my they actually God. Did it. it was so crazy. And it's just, it, you know, um, one of the things you brought up, uh, the Japanimation. So this is so funny. I was I actually love that talking word. to, I was talking to Tyrone Magnus, uh, a couple weeks back and he was saying, he was like, yeah, we used to call it Japanimation. And I was like, what? Cause I had never heard that term before. So then you said it and 90s. I was like, that's so wild. Yeah. Cause he, he, he's, uh, 46. I think he's like my age. No, he's older. Oh, he's, he, oh, he's older than me then. He's older than yeah, me. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. Cause you're three older, three years older than me. He's 10 years older than me. So I was like, I was like, I never heard Whoa. the term Japanimation before. So I was like, so you hearing it, you saying it, I was like, that's so awesome that it's like there was that crossover period that they were still using that as the description of right. it, which is so yeah. cool. An anime, I don't think I heard till like 2001, 2002. You know what I mean? That mm. word.
It was Japan. Yeah. In fact, bro, I'm not even kidding. At Blockbuster Video, the anime section was called Japanimation, dude. And it had like, wow. and that's something else. Dragon Ball and Pokemon was like our gateway drug for a lot of kids right. back then, right? So you go to Blockbuster and you see these movies like, you know, I mentioned Vampire Hunter D Ninja Scroll and, and you start renting them. Okay, what is this this Japanese animation, Japan animation? It wasn't like American cartoons at the time because it was more adult, there was blood, there was obviously sex in some of these things, right. violence. It, so and when you're a kid, all you want to do is be a grown up. And then when you're a grown up, right. wish you were a kid again, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Damn these bills, you know? The only thing good about being an adult is I can get laid. Besides that, everything right. else sucks, you know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So what I was saying was, um, so that's how I discovered more anime. And then, of course, the internet. I didn't have internet in my house till I was 18. We we're, I didn't grow up with it. But when you get access to the internet with high speed and the speeds back then, high speed back then was like a snail now. <laughs> oh it my took God. forever. Downloading one episode took forever. Yes. And, Almost and all day. Hard, <laughs> yeah, right. And hard drives. <laughs> were not what they are now, so you had to right. burn them on CDs, and I still have some back there. You had to get them off the hard drive. So it was just, it was crazy, but it became like an obsession for a lot of people. But the one thing that I do find funny about the Tyro Magnus thing is a lot of folks thought that the anime boom began in the 90s, but secretly, and it was very covert, it was already going on, because if you go back to the 80s, you had mm. a show called Robotech, Robotech mm -hmm. is actually Macross. What mm -hmm. we soon learned is that Saban Entertainment, and by, by the way, Saban became a very wealthy man by doing this, right. took Japanese shows, dubbed them, and then eliminated the Japanese aspect. So when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I was watching shows like The Noozles and mm. Grimm's Fairy Tales on Nick Jr. This is back in the 80s. And I was wow. a little kid. Right now, Grimm's Fairy Tale, The Noozles, Maya the Bee, these are all anime shows. We didn't know because they were just cartoons to us. But then you look into it and it's like Noozles, known in Japan as Hyakuno Chouji, it's some long ass name. And it's like, wow, this is Japanese. No, we were all fooled though. Like, we're no, nobody That's knew. Crazy. And then if you go to oh Saban Entertainment. God. If you go to Saban Entertainment on Wikipedia and look at the history of stuff they've done, there's like 50 shows that are Japanese that I've never read. Like, we're talking about those little anime that, because you know those like small anime nobody remembers? Like, they, they yeah. aired once and that was it in the 80s. They dubbed a bunch of those on syndication. Mm. We didn't even know it was anime. We just thought it was a cartoon. So, right. It's crazy. And that's the crazy, crazy part is like, he was talking about, um, Oh my God. Uh, I forgot what shows he was talking about, but he was saying that there was a movie and maybe you might know this. You probably, I mean, you're pretty sure you do know this. He had saw when he was younger, he had saw Dragon Ball on right, TV. Me too. It was like, me too. And he said there was a movie that he was watching where Goku's name was Zero. It actually wasn't Goku. That's and that's, he was that's, like, that's the harmony. That's the harmony gold dub. That's great. It's, that's fascinating that he actually saw that. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was like, yeah, I saw this thing. He's like, at the time his name was Zero, and I was like, for real? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's crazy. And then he was telling me he was like, yeah, and then disappeared. He's like, and then he's like, it was like years later. I was like a teenager, years. and then I saw Dragon Ball Z come on, and I'm like, hold on, is this the same kid that I? Is this the same kid that I saw? And he was, and for him, it was like he grew up with me. He was like, "Hold on, this is he had never seen anything like that before," you know. So yeah, it was just well, interesting. It's, it's crazy because uh, the Harmony Gold dub is was a very rare thing that aired in 1989 in certain markets. Mm -hmm. Not everybody had the Harmony. I didn't have the Harmony Gold dub. Wow. So wherever he lived, he was one of the lucky ones. Now, ever since then, those episodes are on the internet. They're all available now. But yes, he saw the he saw Dragon Ball before I even I did because that would have been eighty nine. Mm, yeah, I mean, I was like, that's those are those things though, like those, uh, like you said, if it was certain markets, it's like, man, you got a gem and you didn't even know that you had a gem at know. that time. You didn't even that's know. That's so bro. cool. Wow, because like we were talking time. obviously about like the ocean dub, because I I think I still prefer like. 
I love Chris Sabin. I think he's awesome, but I still think I prefer Vegeta's voice in the Ocean I, Dub I personally. Agree. I agree. Uh, I just like the sinister nature of his voice for whatever reason. I just loved it. Same thing with Frieza. I loved Frieza in the Ocean Dub, um, but it was one yeah, of those she things. Passed though, where some, she passed away. She passed away last yeah. year. Yeah. Ah oh, man, so sad. And it was one of those things though where. You know, growing up, I was attached to that version of Dragon Ball because we had it on Toonami for a while. And then out of nowhere, the voices changed. And you're like, hold on, what? Did the voices just like, you don't, like you knew something was different, but you couldn't yeah. put your finger yeah. on it? You're like, Same. and the music. What? Yeah, yeah, and the music changed. Uh, so, yeah, when tell they brought me about it in this, house. Like, Tell me about this. Like, so what about what was it about Dragon Ball for you that connected? Like, what was it that was just like this? You just got stuck with it. And how did it influence other you know, other things in your life? Well, it's funny because it was I'm different than a lot of people because I like Tyrone Magnus. I saw Dragon Ball first before Z. Mm -hmm. And um, but I knew about Z because I, re I have a magazine article that I read about it. So what happened was when I was a kid, I used to like treasure hunting shit like um, Indiana Jones. And there was a show that aired called The mm. Pirates of Dark Water. It, it aired for a very brief mm. time and they never finished. And to this day, they never finished it. I guess they ran out of money or something. It was about collecting these magical gems around the world. And you get to stop this evil sort of, um, it's like Venom symbiote type of thing in the water called okay. Dark Water. So this mm. Dragon Ball show comes on. The first episode I ever saw was when they were in Pilaf's castle, which is not the first episode. But I'm like, okay, this is the show where they collect Dragon Balls and you know, and and they, I picked up on what the show was about because the intro music, you know, the 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 original Kid Mark dub had a had told you everything. So I was into like treasure hunting stuff. Now simultaneously, I was into like fighting games, like Street Fighter and stuff like that. Mm. Open up this magazine one day. I remember exactly. I think it was the April '94 Electronic Gaming Monthly, and it has mm. a special on from Japan Dragon Ball Z Super Futoden. They f they messed up and put the uh -huh. F and not the B. And I'm, okay. I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing this dude with the spiky gold hair doing a Hadouken. This is a Hadouken to me, bro. This ain't no Kamehameha. Right. This is a right. Hadouken to me because I was playing Street Fighter. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's the art. I mean, Toriyama's art instantly gravitates towards you. What I didn't know is... One of my favorite video games as a kid was Dragon Warrior, a.k.a. Dragon Quest. I didn't put two and two together that the mm. artist that did Dragon Quest also did Dragon Ball. Again, mm. you're start, you're piecing it together as a kid. You know, you're right. trying to figure it all out. But they, they, they in, in one of the magazines, they went over the Dragon Ball Z story and they got some things wrong. Um, they, they got some, not, not their fault because it was, they got most of it right, but some of it was wrong. And I was like, this is interesting. And then when Dragon Ball Z aired in syndication, that's when I found it. So, I mean, it, the thing that gravitated it for me was everything that everybody else likes. Everybody likes the combat, the characters, mm -hmm. the comedy, the dinosaurs, the space travel. It's kind of got everything when you think about it. They, mm -hmm. they, Toriyama explores everything, bro. They go into space. They go into the afterlife. Now they're going into other universes. Like, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And... Who knows, man? People nowadays think, okay, well, there's 12 universes. This dude could bust out tomorrow and say there's another multiverse. Like, anything could happen. I'm done predicting mm. it because it can go anywhere. So. Yeah, and that was the thing, too, for me, like, when I was a kid, uh, as a teenager... Well, not even as a teenager, when I was in middle school, when it when I had first started watching Dragon Ball Z, and Same. it was, I think, the biggest thing was, like, watching it, and the next day, I'm like, hold on, it's right after? Like, it's not, like, two weeks later, like, it's the next, it's picking up right where it left off? Like, I had never seen a show like that. Yeah, you're talking about, it's seen... not episodic, it's serialized, where you have to watch it's every week. Exactly. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I'd never seen anything like that before, right? Like, Pokemon, even though it was a continuous journey, it wasn't, there was, like, some episodes that were right after the other one, but usually it was like, okay, now he's in this town, and he's doing this. You can like, skip it. There, there was things where there was like this episode and that episode, there was time that you didn't see between these two episodes, whereas Dragon Ball was like right after the last episode had just happened. And I was like, this is different. I wasn't used to that. So 
I thought that was really cool. And after that, I started seeing like this guy and this whole idea of, you know, surpassing your limits. Like there was like, I, I don't know what I can do, but I'm just going to keep, there was something about that to me that just like hit. And I was like, Oh my, like, I want to be like that. Like there was a something about it. Did you ever get that feeling from it when you were a kid? Like you were just like, like, how did it make you feel? Uh, every emotion, bro. Like every single emotion, like, especially like when you watch it in its purest form. Yeah. I, I, was that what you said? Uh, I, but the thing is, I wound up liking all the characters for different reasons. Like all mm. the edge lords like Vegeta. And I, I also loved Wolverine and Vegeta and Wolverine have similar hair and kind of similar attitudes. So, uh, everybody loves Vegeta for that. And then Gohan was kind of like the character that, that we all liked as kids because he was the strong kid. Goku, mm. because Dragon Ball had never been finished dubbing back then, they people stopped watching him, just watch Z. So Gohan was the only kid that we had to look up to, if, right. you, if you want to say that. He was younger than us because ain't no five-year-old that strong. But <laughs> um, he was inspirational, you know, and the, the characters were great. Like, and, and you wanted to know more about them. Like, even got people like Krillin. And then you have the villains. And I love how, like, every time there's, like, a new arc or something, they, it's, they still do it to this day. It's like, well, we got strong, but they're stronger. You know, you see the Goku-Vegeta right. fight, and you're thinking, okay, they're not going to be able to top this. Then all of a sudden, you, you they start building up Frieza. And they're like, oh, no, he's the emperor of the, the universe. He's, you know, mm -hmm. Vegeta's afraid of him and this and that. And I always liked that. It was similar to Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon was kind of like that, too, where you had, like, the next villain be stronger than the last one. But the thing is funny about what you said is I agree with you. Dragon Ball Z was the first show I watched that was serialized that long. If you remember the cartoons we had when we were younger, you had like a special episode, part one, part two, part, part three, one, part two. Exactly. Yeah. Like, um, I remember, uh, for example, a good example was an X-Men. You had Night of the Sentinels, part one, Night of the Sentinels, yes. part two. Yes. And that show had like an overarching thing. And today, as we're recording right. this, the trailer for the new one came out. Yes. So, right. Yes, I'm very happy about that. Um, but Dragon Ball was like, 30 episodes of one big story, then 50 episodes. We had never seen anything like that before, bro. Like yeah. 50, the Cell Saga is 77 episodes. That's a lot yeah. of time. And yes, yeah, some of it's filler, but, and filler never bothered me that much. But yeah, that's what it made, how it made me feel, bro. I mean, actually, it makes me feel more emotions now as an adult than as a kid. As a kid, it's just an action show. Then you start, when you start going through life, man, and you start going through hard times, you start losing people, you start um, going through depression or, or heartbreak, anime and shows like Dragon Ball hit harder, bro. Like, you know, when okay. I was a kid, those like, you know those like shows like Love Hina, those kind of like yeah. little teenage romance shows. They don't really hit until you actually go through a breakup or you actually go through a relationship. Right. Then it's like I think the you older you get, the yeah, yeah, the more emotional it is. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it, overcoming your limits well, is a thing. I mean, people have lost weight and gained muscle thanks to Goku. Goku's become like a gym, a gym icon and Vegeta because of the gravity training and all that. Like he's inspired a lot of people to get ripped. Yeah, it's so crazy because like I, I I don't know when it was, but I remember the first time I actually saw a a a, a fitness shirt that said "Training to Beat Goku." Like it, I was like. What? It, it was it was freakish to me because again, growing up, it wasn't the cool thing to talk about. So when you start seeing people in the gym wearing training to beat Goku shirts and they, you know, and it's like Goku lifting a crazy amount of weight, and I was like, hold on, so you you're obviously you obviously know what this is. Like you're not wearing this shirt if you don't know what this is. So it it became this like genius how many people were watching this what happened to you when you started seeing athletes musicians all these other people talking about dragon ball or referencing it in their music how did it make you feel as a fan of a time when it wasn't the cool thing to talk about well, it was different for me because when I was in high school, it was the cool thing to talk about. See, really? like in high school, yeah, it was different for me because in high school, wow. we were all we were all geeks. Like 
even like the tough kids from the hood, because like it was right next to Robus Park. Even all the tough kids from the hood like Dragon Ball. Like they, we all played PlayStation One. That was PS One era, and then yeah. a little bit of two. We all, you know, we we all did. And one of the most entertaining things you could ever witness for me is we used to play it in school. See, the thing back then that was wild is our teachers didn't give a damn. As long as we got our work done. So there were a few classrooms where you could actually... I'm not even making this up because you can't do this anymore. We would play PlayStation games. And one of the most fun things ever is watching two trash-talking teenagers <laughs> play Madden. Like, dude, when when you know they're playing Madden and the amount oh, yeah. of shit talk... You know, like, oh, a yeah. touchdown. It's over, bro. Just go home now. <laughs> like, the shit... It, you know what I mean? It's so entertaining to watch this, right? And other games, too. But we were all geeks. But, like, like in high school, it was the cool thing uh, among, like, our group. But after that is when it anime kind of became a bit more of a niche. Mm. But to answer your question, I didn't even know that rappers and um, musicians and athletes were into Dragon Ball until I started my channel. I had no idea mm. because I disconnected from the anime fandom uh, for a while. When I went to college, it's not that I hated anime. I just was more focused on other things. I just didn't really, right. like, that was a thing that I watched. And, you know, I'll watch a few, I watched a few new ones. Here. I still, I was still collecting, um, but it wasn't a big deal. But then I, I was lucky enough to meet Mike Daniels, who I'm still friends with, he at the time was playing for the Green Bay Packers. Now he mm. plays for, uh, I think he played for the, I think it was the uh, the Bengals for a while. Like he moved around. Mm. But Mike Daniels was the first millionaire athlete I ever talked to, like had a conversation with, who was a huge anime nerd, massive anime wow. nerd. And when I went to WrestleMania, I went with him. This is back in... 2018 and i had lunch with him and lawrence guy lawrence guy played for the patriots here's mm. a guy with a freaking super bowl ring a mm. super bowl ring i'm having lunch with this dude see this is why right as for as much bs as youtube gives me bro i'm very blessed to be a to, to be where i'm right. at right this dude had a super bowl ring and we're talking about goku and it's the weirdest thing bro because <laughs> i'm I like I'm in the presence of like these two NFL guys and they're asking me questions about Goku. You know how weird that right. is, bro? Like you're just like, shouldn't but I be asking you questions? That's the yeah. beauty though. It's like weird, that's the though. beauty of that's the beauty of anime. And I the reason why it's so cool to have this these conversations with people is you have all these different walks of life, right? But for whatever reason, we're attached to we there's a bond that we have with the character. Very similarly to like movies. I think with, we with like good stories and stuff like that. That, but we like good stories that we can yeah. resonate with or try to attain. And I think because anime has like this, it's uh, like a fantastical element. We know it's not real, but we aspire to it anyways. It's like, it's like, man, like I wish I could like, there's something about that, but that's so dope. That's such a cool conversation to have. It was so, it was so weird. Like, like, cause I sat there and I was like, this is unexpected but it was cool no it was cool i'm not even saying it's bad and i still talk to mike from time to time like you know we still chat actually i chatted with him a couple days ago um but but yeah there's a lot of them out there and then mike introduced me to this little club he was putting together of nfl athletes that are into dragon ball and he's like oh the dressing Yo. room is same thing with professional wrestlers. You know, I got to meet a lot of those guys who they would tell me stories about how they would wrestle on Saturday nights and then go to their phone and try to catch super, you know, <laughs> like that night. Like, you know what I mean? Or they would, they would, they, one guy in particular told me he would, he was supposed to wrestle at 8 30 and he told the guy to postpone his match so he can watch super first. Like, that's wild, bro. Like, and you think that's you're the only hilarious. one. Hey, you think That's you're the only hilarious. one, bro? I mean, that was the thing too. Like, um, I I'm trying to remember what what shoot we were on. I think it was, uh, what was it? It was we did a, a video called Megazord versus Voltron. For oh, Islam. I love it. And that was an argument as a kid too. And uh, we um, we produced this this video on Ismahawk, and there is um, you know Xavier Woods. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I knew him when he was, he was Austin Creed. 
Yeah. So, so when, when, uh, when he was, he was, he played our black ranger in this video. And so we're on set and where I didn't know he was an anime fan at this time. Right. I didn't, had no idea. I didn't even, I knew he was a, he was in a WWE, but I didn't know that he was an anime fan. So we're sitting, he's, he just put on this black ranger suit and somebody said something about, they asked me like a dragon ball question. He's like, Oh, you like dragon ball? I was like, what? I was like, yeah. And he was like, he's like, dude, he's like, I love Dragon Ball. I was like, what? And then we had this crazy conversation about Dragon Ball. And then somebody was like, he he was trying to make a point. He was trying to make a point that he was like, I believe that Krillin is the most valuable person in the series. He's like, without Krillin, Goku doesn't become a Super Saiyan. And I was like, that's true. I was like, yo, I was like, that's actually a crazy, that's a crazy concept of how you put that just now. But yeah, it, it was, but that was one of those moments for me where I was like, this guy is a whole, he does a whole other thing and also loves something that I love. Like it was just something so cool about that. And seeing him obviously now and you have other wrestlers that came out with like Dragon Ball stuff. I think they actually came out with Saiyan armor, did they not? Like his, oh, his yeah. squad they came out. Yeah, the, the originally that was done by Baba Joe Carrera. Ba- Boba Joe mm. Boba Joe does like he's super talented. He does he he he's the one that created that giant stay in space pod that all the Vegeta sat in. You could actually sit in it and oh, push wow. the button, it makes noises. And he made the That's armor cool. originally. I will say this too, it, it's not just famous people. One thing I learned, and it's also it's not just anime, it's also wrestling, is that like, you know, these are two things that, you know, are perceived to be stuff that like losers are into or socially awkward people are into and there are a lot of people like that but then you meet someone who's like a a lawyer like i've met i I remember in 2018 i was visiting different attorneys in my area and i went to go see a lawyer and i told for something totally unrelated and we're talking and before i left he's like hey are you geekdom 101 and i was like i didn't know what to say (laughs) <laughs> Cause, cause it, like I didn't know what to tell him I was like yeah hey and I shook his hand again even though I already shook his hand and he's like oh I love your videos bro a lawyer bro an attorney a freaking attorney and then so you got people you know you got people who are doctors and so that's why I like so there's a guy I'm not gonna name his name there's a there's a there's a couple you know these guys you know there's dudes out there that are like they're anime fans but they hate anime you know what I mean? Yeah, They're yeah, fans, yeah, yeah. Exactly but they pre- they pretend they hate it. Yeah, which is loser shit. And just 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 like what you're talking about, bro. You have to accept what you like. You know, yeah. it, unless what you like is illegal or weird. Like liking anime now, like we talked about, like you talked about it too, is kind of a normal thing. It's pretty basic. Yeah. But this dude yeah. is saying that anime fans are all losers. He's oh, Geekdom's audience is a bunch of losers, and it's like, well, no, my audience is lawyers, doctors. Um, football players, uh, basketball players, wrestlers that are multimillionaires. So if that's a loser, bro, then great. I'm in the losers club. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, it's wild. Yeah. Everyone's different, but I mean, it, but I think, yeah, I think it's, it's anime has somehow crept into, like, everyone's life in a way. At least people, I would say, born... I would say people born from the 80s and up. I think if you were born in the 70s and 60s, you probably missed that. But 80s mm. and up, I think, you know, it's kind of like hip yeah. hop. Like hip hop, if you're if you were born in the 70s and 60s, you may have missed that. Um, well, 60s mostly, but you know what I mean? Like it's a generational mm. thing. But now everybody, like yeah. they, people are showing people people are taking their kids to go see Dragon Ball Super Superhero that watched Dragon Ball and Toonami when they were kids. It's 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 become yeah. a thing now. Yeah, it's so wild that you said about like people that hate on anime but are anime fans. That's how it was in high school for me. Yeah, so, like, it's very sad. No, ev- so like in high school, I was a kid that didn't fit anywhere because I was an athlete. I was I sang, so I was producing music, and I was in like choir and stuff. I was academically sound, so I was like, "Oh, you you're know, a, a mix of everything." Me. Then, so I didn't fit anywhere particularly. So like I'd be hanging out with this group of people and that group of people, whatever. So I have my friends that I talk to anime about, but I couldn't really talk about anime to my jock friends because they didn't. They were like, "We're not talking about that. Are we trying to get on like?" They, but they yeah, act like yeah. they didn't see it until later i found out they were watching it and i'm like 
What? I was so I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, bro, y'all out here faking the funk this whole time, acting like we were geeks and shit. When really you were into it, you just didn't want to yeah. look like you weren't into it. So it was just one of those things for me when you said that. It's I was true, like, that's though. how it was for us though in high school. For me, anyways, on the West Coast, nobody was talking about anime. Like it just wasn't a thing that people talked about. So and if you did, you were you were a nerd. You were a geek. Oh, you're weird. Like. It was it was such a strange thing, but I wanted to talk yeah. to you about. I want to talk to you about because very few people have had the I would call it a privilege and an opportunity to actually go to Japan. Yeah, to actually go there. You're and you're see, near it. Yeah, and see firsthand what how anime is actually culture, not not a subgenre. Is culture there? How was it for you when you first went to Japan? Like, how was the experience for you seeing it firsthand? Man, that I'll never forget that trip as long as I live. And I want to go back. I want to go back. I, it, okay. I always want to go to Japan for a couple reasons. Um, one of them, one of my bucket list things was I wanted to go to the Tokyo Dome to watch wrestling. Because as a kid, the Tokyo Dome was like MSG for us here in the United States. That's the oh, mecca, wow. you know. You know, the Tokyo Dome. And yeah, yeah. I got to I got to go to Japan. I went for eight days. And two of the days, I went to go see this show called Wrestle Kingdom, which is the biggest show in Japanese wrestling. And I swear to God, bro, when I walked into that Tokyo Dome, it was... I literally took a moment. And sometimes in life, bro, you have to do this. You yeah. have to do this in life. You take a moment, and I just stopped, and I was like, I'm in the Tokyo Dome. I've, I've watched... The Tokyo Dome since I was 10. I watched Pride Fighting Championships. Like, I used to be, I mean, I'm into MMA too. I watched like all these things in the Tokyo Dome. There was live action Sentai, which is Japanese Power Ranger shows in the Tokyo Dome, like stage shows. And I'm, and when you walk into the Tokyo Dome, like, it's weird because, like, you know how you go into like an arena. And then you have like the bathrooms and you have the different aisleways. It was open when you walk in with like a window so you can walk up. So if you didn't want to get to your seat, you could walk up and drink your drink with like a little balcony area that goes right into like the the, uh, the, the middle part, you know, where like the game right. or the, the game. Yeah, so it was built so differently. And I just remember having that feeling. And, and so and but before that, when the plane first landed, if you ever been to Tokyo and Narita Airport, the first thing that you see when you're walking out of the airport, you look to your left on the wall, it's Mario, Princess Peach, and Yoshi welcoming you to Japan. And that's when I knew. I'm, that's when it hit me like, this is Japan. Because mm. nowhere in the United States of America do you have a video game mascot. You can't go to Chicago and have Sonic the Hedgehog welcome you to Chicago. You can't go to New York and have Crash Bandicoot. And you have Mario, Nintendo, legendary characters, bro, since the mm -hmm. 80s, welcoming yep. us to Japan. And it was so, and then I, I love sushi. It's my favorite food. I don't eat it that much anymore because it's got too many carbs. But, like, I loved that whole trip because it wasn't just the anime, even though I spent a lot of money on stuff. But it does <laughs> blow my mind because in Japan, bro, as you know, Anime is sort of like how Disney is here. It's kind of very similar right. as far as the Disney cartoons go. And, the yeah, and they love Disney there, too. It's kind of wild. They love Disney there, too. Disney, yeah. Tom and Jerry, and Spider-Man. It's like they're massively popular there. Right, 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 right. And I remember uh, the thing about Japan, Tokyo specifically, is that their mass transit system blows away any oh. – uh, I mean, oh. bro. New York, uh, uh, Chicago, LA. I've been to all three. <laughs> Garbage. Tokyo, yeah, you can you can get to anywhere in Tokyo within 10 to 15 minute walking distance if you know how to use the trains. So <laughs> you're we're in the subway and I I have it in the other room. I lift up the the little promo and it's freaking Arale and Sembe Noramaki <laughs> from Dr. Slump and they're like waving like that's that's what it that's is, bro. So cool. Can, 
Can you imagine going to the New York subway? You got like Bart Simpson. Like that's the closest Bart Simpson right. in like the nineties. That's the right. closest you come. Right. And yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. and it's wild, bro. You got, and you got, of course, you've heard about the giant Gundam statues. I went right. to the Japanese Walmart and there's a giant Goku. I have a picture of it on my wall. I took a picture with that's him. That's cool. Like it's just so, and the video game culture there, over there, they, they are what we're becoming. The, Japan's yeah, yeah, yeah. always ahead of us, bro. They're always ahead of us technologically and culturally. They are what we're becoming. You got mm. adults there playing video games, arcade games. You got in suits, and by the way. They leave work and go right to the arcade. Dog, I played Samurai Showdown against this kid over there. Didn't speak a word of English. I didn't speak Japanese. I had to use the translator thing. That to, I, I typed it into my phone and I showed him. <laughs> this is before like Google Translate had the vocal thing. So I, he kicked my ass in Samurai Showdown, bro. <laughs> Destroyed me. I'm like, there's loser Japanese kid. But uh, but dude, yeah, it's I love Japan and like just. The, the the what I love about Japan, bro, and this goes into our topic about what I learned from anime, Japanese culture, bro. When I let when you go when you leave the United States, and you did, but I mean when you leave the U.S. and you go to somewhere like Japan, it kind of points out a lot of the flaws of the U.S. Over there in Japan, nobody messes with you. Nope. People are minding their own business. Yep. They are very quiet. They're very quiet yep. people. There's restaurants everywhere, and they're all mom and pop shops. You'll be walking down the street, and you'll look over. There's a little sign for like a ramen place, and you go down the yeah. stairs. Like yeah. they're everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, and and it's all good. It's all good food. Yeah. I went to the conveyor belt sushi place, bro, and destroyed it, bro. I had a stacked. I had the the empty <laughs> plate stacked, bro, like Goku. It was like Goku, bro. You know. It, and I love it. And um, and also the Japanese are very clean people. You don't. You're not very. eating in New York. You can grab an ice cream cone or, or a, a a hot dog and eat it as you walk. That's frowned upon in Japan. You can't just throw yep. your trash away. The streets have There's no, no trash, trash cans. On. There's no trash <laughs> There's no anywhere. Trash <laughs> it's so clean. And I'm just like, why is this place so much better? And it's not even the weeb. Everybody, well, of course you're going to like Japan better because you're a weeb. You like anime. Nothing to do with that, bro. It's, that's that's a small part. It's just the people yeah. there leave you alone. They're very nice. I got ripped off by one restaurant. I won't lie to you. I mm. got ripped off. But every other store I went to... I didn't know how to count yen that well. And then the people there gave me exact change and were like, hey, 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 like, sir, sir, sir. And they gave me exact change after uh. I calculated it later. They don't rip. They, I was a gaijin and they didn't rip me off. And and so uh. it's just they they're just raised in a different culture that is taught respect. And yeah. I really we really need to go back to that in this country, yeah. bro. I'm not you know trying to get wild? political. We you know what's it. wild about this, though, is like there is a – you probably saw this when you were there. We're at the train station, and there's these little kids. They can't – they're probably like six years old, got little white hats on, getting on the train, going to school by themselves. They're like six, seven years old, and – They'll get on the train, sit on the train, then uh, next stop, more kids get on the train, they'll kick it with them or whatever. But I'm like, what is going on? Like, on the platform alone. And it's just... You would never no, let a six-year-old kid ever. go to school in this country alone. Ever. Not with every, all the stories you hear. Yeah. Ever. And like, right. but there, from what we had heard, because my uncle actually lives there, and um, they were saying, like, it's almost like a cultural thing where it's like, all the adults look out for the kids. That's kind of like a so if they see like a kid, yeah, that, that, but that but but bro, think about it. Back in the day, that's kind of how it was. Like yeah, yeah. What what when you were a kid in the eighties, at least in the nineties, you can go yeah. play at your friend's house, and your yeah. mom didn't have to go with you. They trusted. Correct. It. Also, uh, you know, I've also been to Cuba because I'm originally from Cuba, and in oh, Cuba, wow. it's like that. Yeah, it's like that in Cuba too, where. Everybody knows each other. Here, yeah. I don't know my neighbors, bro. I don't know who the hell lives over there, over there. I don't know. I don't know any of them. But in Cuba, right. everyone knows each other. So, and, and also because of that, you you misbehave, 
You're going to get spanked by the neighbor and your mom when you get home. You're going to get it from two months. They're, they're going to whoop your ass. And you're going to get your ass whooped again. It's, it's, it's just that that's that, um, collectivist culture that yeah. I think America is much more like individualist. It's about you succeeding on your own. Whereas yeah. if you think about it, if you've got a family, uh, like, like for example, let's say that you're running a business and it's you and your family. You got one house. Let's mm. say that you actually, and this is weird to some people, but to people from the Middle East and India and Japan, it's normal. Let's say you buy a house and the house has four bedrooms and it's you, your wife, your brother mm -hmm. and his wife and your kids. That's like weird. Why don't you get mm. your own house, bro? Why are y'all living with your family still? But in but for foreign people, they live with their parents until they get. Oh, then they take care of their parents. They 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 move in with the wife's parents. Like we, it's more of a family unit. And but when you yeah. do that, you save money. If I had a if my brother passed away, but if he was alive and he lived with me, bro, we live in the same house because then we have one mortgage, one rent instead of having to pay two rents, two mortgages, two electric right. bills. And people don't understand like that's really the way to do it, but. That's that's frowned upon here. It's very yeah, there, frowned upon. That's one thing that I noticed when I was in Japan is like everybody everybody looks at it almost from a perspective of how am I contributing to society? It's like yeah. everybody's playing yeah. a part. And they take their part very serious. We were on the Shinkansen, the the high speed train, the bullet train. I love and, I love the bullet train. And we had and this is the first time I'd noticed it. And they had the cart person come through with the food and stuff you want to buy snacks x y and z they get to the end where the door is to go into the next car and she turns around and she bows to the car and we're like i was like did she just bow to us so then she they came back in with another cart they opened up he came through bowed and started walking through and i was just like this is respect. it's just a the respect is crazy i was like okay this is different. And this was like day one when we got there. And I was just like, I'm in for like a whole new experience because I had never seen that before. And then like you were saying the the cleanliness, bro, we were, we were in a subway station and they were vacuuming the stairs. Yeah. Like yep. A, yep. I saw like that. Dyson, I saw that. With like a and Dyson cordless. Yep. I was like, yep. what is going on here? Dude, and I went to the bathroom, and at least twice they're vacuuming the bathroom, and they're vacuuming the outside. They have like the uh, yeah. it's the they have the Dyson, but they also have like a little water pressure thing they throw on yeah, there. They yeah, soap yeah. it up. They yeah. they literally wash the streets, man. Somebody gets paid to do that. No, it's completely different, bro. It's completely different. Yeah. it's completely different. It was, just, it was I, a level of care, bro. And, and like the the thing that I was talking about before, where it was like it felt like anime was just like everywhere. And to kind of to your point, when you're talking about the uh, you, you went into Narita, is that the the airport you came in? I believe so. Tokyo like Narita Airport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I flew into I think Haneda. I think I flew into Haneda, but we got on. We had to take a a train to get to the the. Shinkansen. So from the airport, we had to take like um, a JR line or, or another line. But yeah, anyways, I took we get one on this to, train. from my hotel back. Yeah. Yeah. So we get on this train and I'm looking up because they have like the little advertisements and then they have like what stop oh, is I next. I love that. I and love that. the advertisement popped up. The first advertisement popped up was Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. Like that was the first thing that popped up on the train. And I was like, there's no way. Like, there's just, I was like, there's no way. So we end up getting to uh, the next, I think it was uh, Shinagawa Station, where we had a transfer to the Shinkansen. And I go to a, a little, um, uh, like a, I guess, corner store, convenience store inside there. By the way, the train stations in there are incredible massive like, you can do massive. everything in these they're things. like 10 floors yeah they're huge and the food you can get in oh my god it's oh, i love japan so and not just there. that the 7-elevens have like yes. better food they don't have the crap yes. that we have it's so and it's I, literally 7-eleven yeah so i end yeah. up going i think it was i think in there there was i don't know if it was a 7-eleven or if it was a family mart it's one of the two but i end up going in and i saw Goku on this like card thing. So I'm thinking, oh, they sell trading cards for Dragon Ball in here. So Take I go one to it as a souvenir. Bro, 
bro, it's actually a chocolate. There's, it's a chocolate brand, but it had Goku as the advert on it, like the mascot. And there was all these other chocolate brands with anime characters as their mascot. I was like, this is yeah, like, wild. Like- like the Kit Kats, like there's Kit, there's a billion Kit Kats, and some of them have oh. anime characters on them. I think Yugi from Yu Gi Oh was one of them that I saw. No, but I, oh, it's wow. so different because, like, like you said, you're in the train and they have screens, and on some of the screens, it'll like it'll let's say that let's say you're in Japan and they're about to come out with another Dragon Ball movie. You'll have that dude with a Japanese deep voice, Shin Kentan, Dragon yeah. Ball. Yeah. You'll look up and you'll see a clip of it, and you're and you're like, yeah. Am I watching a trailer in the yeah. you're, you're watching a trailer, <laughs> a movie trailer in the train? Yeah, it's wild. The only con, there is one con that I don't like about Japan, and that's that everybody smokes cigarettes. That's the only oh, thing they, I don't they, like. They they smoke a lot. They yeah, are, that's the con. They love cigarettes. Oh my yeah. god! Um, but it was. I th- think their th- cigarettes was, are, are, are le- they're less bad. For, are their their cigarettes like less unhealthy? I, I think. I don't know, but I just saw like vending machines of cigarettes. I was like, this is wild. So, well, their vending machines are wild, anyways. Oh yeah, the, the ones machines, with drinks in them. Uh, like 20 oh, the of them. drinks ones. Yeah. So the the other part though that I that I thought was interesting was uh the they are um uh, what was it called? How they have stuff set up. They're very like, this is how it's done. They're very patient. Like they they will line up for food, like it won't even be like a big deal. Like, oh yeah, we we it's like it's just a thing. Like you line up to to eat, it's gonna be a little bit of a wait. It is what it is. Nobody's complaining about a wait. Usually, when you're hearing people complain, it's a, it's a foreigner complaining about how long are we waiting. Uh, but everybody there is kind of like, this is how things are done. We've always done them this way, and we're gonna continue to do it this way. It's yeah, it's tough it's shit. very it's it's exactly what it is. Like this is just what happens here, and. I think as an American, even though I've been living in Australia and it's a much slower pace here than it is in America, it it still tests your patience about, is it really that big of a fucking deal? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like just chill the fuck out. That's what it makes you kind of do. Cause like in your head, you're like, damn, like we've been waiting here for like 40 minutes. Like, like what's going on? Why is it taking so long? But people are just enjoying their food. They're enjoying their food. They take their time. And then when they get up, they leave. And, and yeah, man, that was, I think, the hardest thing for me to deal with was just getting used to waiting. And, by the way, um, I will say this. I the one I would move out there except for one for sure. thing. Well, there's two things stopping me. Number one, my mm. job. If I move mm. out there and do what I do for a living, I can get arrested because their laws are different than the ones here. And for number sure. number two, yeah, forget that. And number two... Mm marijuana is illegal in japan however <laughs> i yeah if you get caught with marijuana in japan bro you, you're Raps. gonna get locked up you're done yeah i was able to sneak some in which i tell people this and they look at me like i'm freaking like i'm they look at me like i'm el chapo bro and or, or i'm the guy who killed tupac <laughs> or something bro like a, you snuck weed into japan how did you not get caught so think about this everything you're talking about right while high my dopamine level so i'm in the train right and i'm just like you know and you're and you're seeing those trailers and you're hearing japanese music and like it's all sensory overload you know what i mean so in the tokyo dome like you know the big the fireworks and everything and it's just like with the weed it's dude if that was legal it would be the best place to live but they're, <laughs> they frown upon that so much man yeah can't do anything it's so interesting yeah it's so interesting i i feel though I think a lot of stuff in Japan is starting to change because the younger generation, because of their access to the internet and their view of the world is different. Like Japan is actually declining in population because yeah, people, not younger, good. Kids, younger people aren't having kids. They're, they're waiting. So a lot of the workforce is much older. Um, and then people aren't having kids. So it's actually, uh, p- people aren't really following the older traditional things of like, all right, why well, just do this? Now people are now, sh- you know, 
chasing their dream, so to speak, and things like that, where it's they're not really focused so heavily on, well, I'm just going to do this to support the the community vibe of things. And yeah. I think because of that, I think some of these things will probably start to change. Um, they've become a little bit more westernized, I think, especially after uh, the Olympics. Because now, before, before the Olympics, I had friends that went there and they're like, dude, it was so hard to navigate. Not a lot of people spoke English. There wasn't a lot of English signs. You had to use Google Translate a lot. When we went, I went last year, there was English everywhere everywhere that's, that's what i'm saying i think it depends on where you go because tokyo had english everywhere but if you go to like mm. osaka or if you go to like so, that the mm. farther you get from tokyo the less english they yeah. speak so i went to i was in osaka for the first six days in english i had no problem but, i would start okay. trying to speak i'd be like ohio and then they would be like hi like i'm like hi like it would throw me off i was like i spent like two and a half months on doing because you're round sure. eyes bro because <laughs> yeah, you're round I'm eye like, they knew yeah, yeah so and i would i would try to speak japanese because i just wanted to be as respectful as i possibly could like i'm here you speak japanese i'm gonna try my best to speak japanese that was my thing but they yeah, were me just too. trying to sp- yeah, so they were trying to speak English to me, though. So I was like, okay. And then, but we had no issue in the train stations in, in Osaka. Then we went to Kyoto, and it was Kyoto, a similar that's thing. What I was it was, thinking. It was yeah. less English there, for sure, but it was still not difficult to navigate. And then Tokyo, forget it. It was easy. It was super easy in Tokyo. Right. Um, but I think it's because either... They were prepping for the for uh, the Olympics. So if you went there in like 2019, 2018, it was probably starting to get Bro, more English. There. I went. You, do you know when I went? Mm-mm. I went January 2020. Three months before the pandemic, bro. Three months before the pandemic. We got out just in time, bro. I came back January 8th. I came back to the United States, bro. Bro, and you know what's crazy? Because I wanted to be there for the Olympics. I wanted to go there for the Olympics so bad. When they announced, like, the the mascots for the Olympics and, like, Goku was on there. And I was like... I was like, no way. I was like, I have to go. I was like, I need to try to get to Japan for the Olympics. Uh, But yeah, like Japan changed my life, bro. Like just the perspective of how they live. But then also seeing like we're on the train and seeing grown men and women reading manga on their phones. Or playing and DS just, or whatever. Or playing DS. And I was just like, Switch. man, like I was like, this is, this is just normal here. Like there was, there's, there's. It was just a, a strange feeling of like, I belong. That's what it felt like. It felt like, oh, wow. Like, I don't feel like some people will look at you and be like, oh, you're watching cartoons. You're watching cartoons. You're reading comic books. <laughs> like, it doesn't, it's not found upon just, there. They just leave you alone. They leave yeah. you alone. That's what I like. They, they, there's these stories of like people getting into fights and stuff like here or, or, you know, at the club or wherever, you, it just doesn't happen over there, bro. It just doesn't happen over there. Did you ever try to yeah. go into one of those uh, Yakuza only um, p- places that you're not allowed to go into? You ever try going to one okay. of those? Okay. Because so then, they, be, got- then they, then they, then they, <laughs> then it's different. So I, I have a little bit of a story. Uh, we're in Osaka, and this was like one of the nights we were walking around me and my my girl, and. We're walking, and again, I'm from the States, so I'm very socially aware, very, right? Head on a swivel. So I'm walking around, and we, we're walking uh, past Dotonburi. It's like this popular area in Osaka, and we're walking further down, make a left, and it's a little. it becomes more of like a red light district vibe. Like, right. I'm like, That's I'm what I was thinking the of. people around, right? And then we get to this one intersection, and in this intersection, we see no women. So I'm like looking like there's no women in, on the intersection and there's just guys on corners but they're not on the corners they're like in the street on the corners and i was like all right we're gonna we're gonna go back towards the other area she's like why i was like i don't think we should be over here like in in my head like i'm like something's off here something's off uh, something's off there was no girls it was just guys on corners looking at people and i was like nah i was like we're gonna go this way go back towards the the tourist area i was like i think we shouldn't be over here uh i wonder what that did you ever find out what that was no but she was like i'm one of those guys that i uh when I start to observe a, a shift in in behaviors of people, I just kind of get out. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this is this doesn't feel like the street, the block before. 
this feels right, very sure. different. I was like, I was like, I'm just going to leave. And at the time I was like, I didn't want to get her into a situation because she's very curious. So I was like, look, we're just going to head back this direction because I don't know what this is, but I don't want to find out. She's like, is Japan? I thought you said Japan safe. I was like, I was like, that doesn't mean that there aren't people. If you, if you do the wrong thing that you won't get him hemmed up out here. Like it's, it's not that like, it's like, I don't know what's going well, on it, out here. It's it's safe, but there's still, like you said, there's still bad things. A buddy of mine yeah. went to Japan, and he went to it was similar to your story. He went to a red light district. Um, it was like a, I don't know if it was a club or restaurant. It was a restaurant, and mm. and he didn't know it was yakuza only. But the guy's like, no, no. The, the guy would let him in. He's like, no, no. He's like Japan only, Japan only. He told him that, and then he walked. He turned around and left. Then he found out from one of the guys he was with, like, yeah, that's a that place is owned by the Yakuza, like the Japanese mm. mafia. You don't want to go mm. in there. And it was like, you're not, you're only allowed in there. If you're you're only allowed in there if you're Japanese. And from what I understand, the the thing over there is not like drugs. The thing over there is prostitution. Mm. Unless you have a lot of, if you have a lot of money, if you're a guy, Jim, bro, if you're like one of these Americans, like. Like, a, I don't know, let's say Jeff Bezos, right? And you go over right. there, you can get whatever you want. But if you're just a regular tourist like you or I, bro, they don't want anything to do with you, bro. Now, I don't know. Yeah. I, again, I I have my own opinion of prostitution. It's whatever. But, like, it doesn't – like, I'm not, like, one of those guys that frowns upon a guy paying money to get – it's if your money. Do whatever you want with it. But the Japanese don't want to share some things with, with non-Japanese. Not to mention mm-hmm. that, actually, when I went to the Tokyo Dome – they have like the outer bowl area and then they have the intersection, like the inner part. And I was told that the inner part, you can only get tickets for that if you live in Japan. You either have to be mm. Japanese or have a Japanese address. Otherwise, you can't get tickets for that area. And that mm. was like, oh, that's a bummer. Like you imagine if you got all this money and you want to sit front row. Let's say you got like 10 mm. Gs. You want to, Whatever, I'll blow it on Tokyo Dome. Oh, no, you can't. Cause you have a Japanese address. Yeah. They, and they don't, and the thing is, they don't care that much about money like people think they do. There's other things they care about. Yeah. Because if they, if they cared about money like you think they do, we would have had more Dragon Ball already. We'd have to wait five years for more <laughs> Dragon Ball, you know? Yeah. That's, it's so funny. And you that's said what that it was because, about. Because they're, it's, it's a, it's such a strange community. Cause like they like fashion, strange. but they, but they don't hold on to stuff for too long. So like, um, because I think a lot of it too is there's not a lot of space. So the homes aren't that big in the cities. Right. So in the cities, the homes aren't that big. So they're not hoarding stuff. They don't just have a lot of stuff. They have yep. kind of like what they're wearing. And then we would go to like the op shops there, like the secondhand shops. And the stuff that we would see there looked brand new, but it was like, maybe a well, year they old. Also, they also take care of their stuff, man. Everything. Because like, Dude, for example, if you go to a flea market in the United States and you try to buy like a Nintendo, you go to the Nintendo section, you get Nintendo cartridges, the labels half peeled off, yep. you got some writing on it, whatever. In Japan, it's like it's new. Bro, it's like it came new. out yesterday. They take, they take care, care of their, their stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. It's wild. And I was, again, it's those things of like the level of care for things. Why it's, can't we be just, like that here? It's just different. And about, it's a cultural thing. It's just a cultural thing, bro. And I think that's something that we're slaying there. Is what it is, and the other thing, too, though, was I was trying to figure out when I would watch anime. One of my best friends, he was like, when you go to Japan, you'll think you're in an anime. And I was like, OK. And I didn't understand what he meant by that. And then when I get there and I'm like. OK, so what they're doing in anime is they're taking what is in Japan and just making it the backdrops of stuff. So makes like, sense. If you're, I mean, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. But, but it's one of those things where I never connected it that way because we, as as Westerners, things that are animated are cartoons, so we assume that it's just fictitious. Oh, we're seeing things that are just a made up world, whatever. But then when you watch Bleach. And you're seeing like, oh, yeah, I'm watching this part of this this anime. It's in a city. You think it's just a made up city. Oh, oh, this area looks it's a riverbank and it's grass, blah, blah. OK, yeah, it's a riverbank. But then you go to Osaka and you see there the riverbank and you're like, there it is. Yep. 
what the fuck are you watching Jujutsu Kaisen? And like, no, you're in Shibuya. That's literally Shibuya, almost right. to the exact detail of. Subways. It's almost like the the artist took pictures and then yes. came and then went to the studio and but, like almost but, traced it. But this is but this is the thing though. It's like because this is just a medium of entertainment. Westerners do the same thing in film. We shoot in L.A., Chicago, New York. We don't repurpose the city. It's just you're in New York. That's just, or that's you make backdrop. it look like that. You make it look right, like or you that. make it look like yeah. so. It's there. They're just using their backdrops and placing the animes in their backdrops, but it's illustrated. So you just don't because we're not from Japan, we wouldn't know the references. But then you see like One right. Punch Man, and you're looking at buildings and stuff. You're like. This looks like how Japanese housing looks like. Like it just looks like Japan, but yeah. you wouldn't know that if you've never been to Japan. That it looks like Japan. Like it's it's the weirdest thing, bro. And I was like, this is so cool. It just feels like you're up. Like it, they're drawing from their experience, from their life, but we don't know that because we've never been there. Right, right. No, and the other thing too about Tokyo is. I've been to New York, Chicago, L.A. Tokyo is like 10 times the size yeah. of yeah. – we went yeah. for eight days. You you got to go there for like three months to experience <laughs> yeah. even a – bro, it's I've too, never so seen big. a city that big. It took two hours driving from the airport to the hotel. Dude, it is so <laughs> – I've never seen a city that big. And you know they say that there's cities in China that are bigger. <laughs> You know what's crazy? Here's the thing, like, because as population is the biggest city in the world, right? And and we were uh, in the sky tree, and we're looking out, and I was like, Tokyo is it's so, it's so weird. It's such a big city, and it's so dense. It's, but it's wide not, too. It's wide. It's dense, but it's not super vertical. Like it's not no, New York in not. the sense of like, hey, eighty story buildings everywhere. Like you, you'll probably have the odd areas like business districts in Tokyo. You'll have like a twenty story building, thirty story building max. But they're not like a ton of like fifty, sixty story skyscrapers everywhere, right? So, but it's so dense where it's like each street, every every alley. There's restaurants or businesses in every right. alley, everywhere. Yep. If they have yep. like a shape like this of space, they're like, we could put a building in there. That shape. And like they, they figure it out. It's so yep. crazy. Yeah, there are so many. I mentioned the mom and pop shops. There are so many little ramen places ran by, you know, probably, you know, regular people. And you go mm -hmm. in and it's like just a little like. Almost like as big as a bedroom, kind of. Yeah. And you and you have like tables, but it's not like here where we have tables. The tables are up against the wall with a little bit of water there and that uh, that green stuff, that green tea yeah. mix thing, whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, and so, you can only fit maybe thirty people in the restaurant, but it's normal. That's like normal yeah. there. I like yeah. it though. I think it's convenient and cool. I I loved it because it was like, oh, you can find food anywhere. And I understand, too, because, like, my uncle lives there, and he was like, when we were walking around, I was like, you really don't need, like, wherever you're living in Japan, everything is within, like, There's a, a two- or three-mile radius. Like, you have everything. When we were in Tokyo, bro, and I was looking for, like, shoe, stops, uh, shoe uh, shops, and I just typed in Adidas on my maps, and there was, like, five Adidas shops like not like not like offshore uh, like sneaker store stores that sell Adidas. They were actual Adidas shops, but there was like five within a square mile. Right. There's so yep. it's so yep. dense that they're like, there's too many people here. We have to have multiple shops everywhere. And it's uh, it's so smart. wild. Yeah, it's so it's wild, smart. bro. I mean, w when I first went to New York and I saw the underground malls, because I'm from Florida, mm -hmm. we don't have anything like that down here. That was right. like a trip. And then, yeah. or, or the, or the, I went to Grand Central Station. Yeah. And Grand Central, bro, Grand Central Station is like a bathroom compared to the Tokyo yeah. uh, train station, yeah. bro. It's, yeah. and there's, and they're all like this, where there's these big, and like you said, there's restaurants. There's, we went to the Pokemon shop. There's a, a Pokemon yeah. shop in, yeah, it's just Pokemon. Yes. Like it's just and then, Pokemon. Oh, the, the, and the Japanese bakeries, bro. Like I went oh, to one of those. Oh my god! It's so oh. good. It's so good. Their sweets. Yeah. Okay, was it like this for you? We were eating their sweets, 
and nothing felt heavy and nothing was oversweet. It's weird. They give you little ice cream. So when you go to the Tokyo Dome, they give you these sort of square ice cream bars. Uh, it's like a cookie around it, sort of like, yeah, a cookie around it, kind of like an ice cream sandwich. And yeah, yeah th- it still tastes like chocolate, but it's not like super rich chocolate, but it's right. still good. Yeah, their sweets have less sugar in them. Now, what I didn't do, because it's a waste of time for me, is I never went to like an American Japanese, meaning I never went to Taco Bell. I never went to McDonald's. I know their <laughs> menus are different. But I never bothered. I just want Japanese food. I want sushi. Hey, yo, I, I, I needed to try McDonald's there. I've because heard, in yeah. Australia, I was tempted. Australia, in Australia, McDonald's is different from the States as well. So when I went there, I was like, I just got to try it. They had like some like teriyaki quarter pounder or something like that. It was delicious. That sounds good. It was that sounds very good. good. Um, but – I just needed to try it. It's still McDonald's. Like it, it, it's not like, oh my God, like this is the best thing I've ever had. It's still a fast food burger. But uh, I did try McDonald's and I tried Burger King there. Both of them had like some kind of uh, Asian inspired flavors, obviously. But, but it's very, less salt, right? Because my ex told me about a cheeseburger and she told me it's less, less salty. salty. Yeah. Yeah, less salty and there's less sugar in the in the uh, in the buns. Like they, right. their pastries, they are so good. They're so good. Oh my god, pastries! I, I keep telling people because yeah. like a lot of people like pastries in Europe, and I'm like, I've oh, never I had love a European ton of chocolate. European pastries and chocolate is very good. I was like, I think Japan. It's on the same level, but in a different category because like, it's not it's not the sweetness that you get. It's like a soft. It's like a it like melts. It's like a it's a different feeling when you're eating. Like, it. Like They're texture. not heavy. Yeah, yeah it's very. Yeah. It's so different. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm not a cook, bro, but I know exactly what you're talking about. You have to mm. go to Japan. People. I mean, I think people hear about this and you have to go to Japan to really understand. You know what I mean? You can hear us talking about it, but like when you actually take a bite out of it, it's like, yeah, like the bread I had there. I, when I went to the bakery, I had just a, a, a like a little loaf of, a little, um, like a bun and I mm. ate it and it was so soft and it, but it was crunchy yeah. on the outside, soft yeah. on the inside. I'm like, this is perfect. And it's yeah. always perfect. It's, it's just, yeah. and, it, it, and the thing I hate about this is people are going to watch the, oh, two weaves talking about it. They grew up with anime. No, you don't have to like anime. You don't yeah. have to like f- freaking Sentai or live action giant robots. If you just yeah. like food, it's worth going just for the food. Yeah. My uncle just that lives that. there. He's been living there since 2020, actually. Um, he's not an anime fan at all. He doesn't watch anime. Right. Uh, and he loves it in Japan. He loves it. He moved from San Francisco to Japan. Um, but just for the have things you're you talking about. Have you ever been to a baseball game in Japan? I haven't. I re- So, okay, time out. I started watching a, a baseball anime. Because I've never really liked baseball. And people keep telling me, you got to watch this anime. Watch this anime. Watch this anime. And I started watching this anime called Ace of Diamond. Fucking phenomenal. Love it. It made me want to watch baseball in Japan because baseball is huge there. I didn't know that it was big like that in Japan. And Massive. like we were on the train and we saw like the Mazda stadium. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, So I wanted to go. We just I don't even think it was – I don't think games were going on at the time that we were there. Yeah, for me, I I I'm Cuban, so like that's our sport. But I was never mm. a fan of baseball. Like my dad was a big baseball fan. I was never into it. Mm. I find it just kind of boring. But when you look at footage of a Japanese baseball game, when there's like a hit, they have fireworks and they have these balloons pop up and all this. Like it's so different. Oh, wow. And I I always wanted to go to a Japanese baseball game just to experience that because it's almost like. It's almost like a like a variety show, you know. You have the guys in the mascot mm. suits running around. Right. Like we have that here, but they're everywhere. Like a, a, a giant baseball with like arms, and they're like taking pictures with kids. Like it's. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even into baseball like that, bro. But I want to do it just to see what it's like. Yeah, but there's so no, much I, to do. Like I said, Tokyo's yeah. so big. There's there's yeah. so, it's it's literally like when you first play like gta 5 and you look at that world map and you're like i'm never gonna explore this 
it's that's that exactly time what it feels like it that that's times exactly 10 it though like. it's like there <laughs> I, exactly I would have to like. move here to find everything <laughs> i didn't even get to go in one of those did you do the hot springs with like where you go in there with your chick or whatever no like the, we the, were the, supposed to we just we we, we ran out of yeah, bro, I didn't get we, to were, either. we were in bro we were in tokyo for seven days bro and maybe you were like this as well we had plans there's never enough day. time we had, we had plans, plans yeah. Of, like, we're like, oh, we're going to go here, here, here. And then you start walking, and I swear to God, you feel like a squirrel. You're like, oh, oh, like it's overload. And like you, you're you going straight. Imagine that you when keep, you're high. You keep doing this because you can't focus on the mission. You're just like, oh, my God, you're getting pulled everywhere. Yeah. Ugh. Right. I mean, dude, when I was in, I think, the fish market area, um, they mm. had – a Dragon Ball Z Zenkai Battle Royal machine. Now, I had only seen clips of this oh, wow. game. Yeah, and, and I had to try it. I mean, it's me. Like, I had to try, even if I lost. I don't care. I want to try this game. It wasn't that good, but it was okay. And I tried it, and it was it was like you said. I'm walking, I look over, I see arcades, I go in, and there's a Dragon Ball Z Zenkai Battle Royal machine. So I'm with my chicken, I'm like, hey, I got to try this. I have to try it. And then I got to play Dragon Ball Heroes, at the oh, Japanese Walmart, it. the oh, actual so heroes. Cool. Yeah, it so wasn't cool. for me. It's not okay, for me. That's but fair. but that's but cool. it was. But it's cool. I got to actually try it. But the yeah. coolest thing for me, as as a fan of Dragon Quest since I was four, is I went to Luita's yeah. Tavern, which is a Dragon Quest inspired restaurant. Mm. That was like. You walk in, and they've got the figures of all the characters in this glass case. It's a little basement area. They have a giant TV screen that has the trailers for the games loop on loop. It does kind of oh, wow. get old because the trailer for the same game over and over again. But they give you food, and the food is inspired by the game. So, like, there's a character oh, in the game cool. that has a giant club. And so, yeah, they give you a giant turkey leg and, you know, we were eating it and it's just... That's cool. Yeah, and they give you... There's a slime that has, like, um, a, it's like a meat pastry. There's meat inside of it. So good. Like, and that mm. type of stuff being... Like, when you're a fan of something... We also went to the Square Enix Cafe. It got mm. shut down after we left. And so you're oh. seeing, like, you know, like, Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy and all these, like, it's, it's just, it's it's very welcoming for for people who are into nerd stuff. It's just, and there's stuff that you, you can't get that anywhere else outside of maybe anime conventions. Like, I right. remember I went to a store and they had the freaking Astro Megazord uh, from In Space, Power Rangers In Space slash hmm. Mega Ranger, and I wanted okay. to buy it. I wanted to buy it, but they were missing the gun. So I didn't get to buy it, but there's figures there. Like there's figures of like eighties Japanese wrestlers that I wanted to buy them, but again, and then there's Dragon Ball toys that you might get lucky if you go to an anime convention. There's usually a guy there mm. who has stuff from Japan. You you might get lucky, but in Japan it's everywhere. Like every everywhere. store has like figures or games that are like easy to get over there but difficult to get over here you know what i mean i'm sure yeah, same they're for very us, big but it's wild they're very big with like they don't sell stuff online they're very big no they of don't like, no you can only buy here like so me and my girl are really that's we, true um, we like fashion stuff so uh we were everything there is a boutique everything every fashion store there because there's so many people it doesn't matter. It's like, all right, well, we'll we'll just have a, a, a small boutique of our own clothing. So many stores like that. And we're like, oh, do you have a website? And like, oh no, only Japan. And I was like, I'm not even mad at it. Like, I'm not even mad at it. Like, it's like, no, if you want it, you just gotta they come get here and so get it. They get so much like, business anyways, right? And then you gotta remember the name of the store. Like, how do you yeah. remember the name? You got to take a picture Bro, of it was, or something. I was taking a picture, and then I would go to my maps and make a pin and screenshot yeah. the pin. So I knew where on the map it was. Bro, I'm I coming was, back yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> bro, but um, before we wrap, bro, I wanted to ask you a question, maybe in terms of, like, where you this are in your podcast. life now. This podcast should be called Going to Japan and Why You Should Go. That's what you should call it. This is why you should go to Japan. Eat. 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 And, and um, you know what else is cool, too, is you do a lot of walking. But w when we went, it was cold, but it wasn't freezing cold. It was January. Mm. So if you eat, like, a heavy meal, you can walk it off pretty easily. I walked oh, yeah. most of my meals off pretty I just wanted to say that. So oh, if yeah. anybody's out there worried oh, yeah. about overeating, sure. 
You will do a lot of walking. And don't think, and it's weird, because I know people don't like walking. It's not that bad. It really is. Like it really when you're is when you're bad. in your when you're in a different city from your own, you will walk you way got, more than you will in your own. And you've got yeah. energy. It's like when you yeah. go to Disney World, right? And there's yeah. almost nobody there, and the park is yours. There's this like infusion of energy, like Goku gathering the energy for the Genki Dama. <laughs> you just yeah. no, but I mean, interrupt is one to get that point out for people no, no. who want to go. I agree. everyone should I go. Agree. Everyone should go. Everybody I, I, watching I this, somebody to go. go. You, everyone's <laughs> want, got. We, I want people to go and experience. It, bro. I want it's so all, good, bro. I want all of my listeners. I planned an idea. I, we're never going to be able to do this. Where when superhero came out, I was going to do like a get together in Japan of like a few people, like maybe fifteen people, and we all go see it together. Didn't work out because of timing issues, and the movie got postponed. But that'd be something mm. fun to do. A big that'd anime so cool. movie comes out. Doesn't have to be Dragon Hell Ball. Yeah. We get a bunch of Americans, and we get together and go see it. I mean, that was the Tokyo Dome for me. It was just wrestling, not anime. But that's all. And also, one more thing. The freaking Toho Cinemas, they have the 4DX. We only have like three of those in America. In Japan, they're mm. everywhere where the whole movie theater rocks. So if you're watching Godzilla, boom, 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 like we don't have that here except for like three places. You know what I mean? Where the whole chair moves, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they throw water yeah. on you. Yeah, we don't have that here. I wish we did. Yeah, but anyways, I, you, you I, were saying. I'm personally not a fan of those, but I know people well, that don't, love don't and bring, die by them. Yeah, don't yeah. bring popcorn. But yeah. <laughs> um so before we wrap, bro, room. like obviously you've had uh, uh awesome success on your channel, right? And you've built what you've built with Geekdom and obviously with other things that you probably have your hands in. What do you what would you what I guess maybe would you? How would you tie that in with anything that you've maybe learned from, maybe Dragon Ball? Like, like you know the philosophies of this show probably in and out from anyone, right? So, like, are there things that you think that someone could use from that show, philosophy wise, mindset wise, if they want to aspire to maybe become a creator like yourself? Uh, well. One of the things about Dragon Ball overall, it, both as a viewer and somebody in universe, is sometimes you've got to be patient uh, because mm. a character will die. I'll give an example. We'll use an actual Dragon Ball example. At the end of the 22nd tournament or the beginning of the Piccolo arc, Krillin's dead. You're not mm. going to see him again until the end of the arc when they bring him back to life. So if that's your favorite character, you better be patient. But what's weird about it is even if he's your favorite character, the writing, and we're talking about Dragon Ball and Z, not so much the new stuff, but the writing is so good that you're just still invested. So I think patience is a big one, but also the one thing I think Dragon Ball teaches that kind of mirrors a lot of philosophical and religious beliefs this is kind of a worldwide thing it's just that it's it's, it's in different um mediums is forgiveness mm. forgiveness mm. is a big deal in 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 judaism christianity islam mm. it's also a big deal in anime and eastern culture because you know love thy neighbor you know pray for your enemies i don't know if i've gotten mm. to that point yet because i hate my enemies but uh <laughs> you know what i'm saying but in Dragon Ball, you've got characters. Like, think about if Dragon Ball was real. You've got mm. Vegeta, who is responsible for killing... Nappa really did it, but let, they're together. For killing four of your best friends. Yeah, mm. you brought them back to life, but it was hell to do that. You had to go to Namek. I don't know right. if I would ever forgive something like that. Like, I don't know if, if, if mm. this were real. Like, could you really forgive somebody who murdered four of your best friends? Or if you're mm. Gohan, someone who murdered, like, your father or your father figure, Piccolo. So it's one of those mm. things where, like, Dragon Ball kind of teaches us to... And again, I'm not saying you have to forgive that, but people do change. People mm. do get better in life. People do grow up. Mm. And I'm a, an example of it. When I first started doing YouTube... I won't lie, I was very immature, I was gassed up by my audience initially, and I mm. let it get to my head for a few years. Then, after a while, you just grow up and you realize that there's bigger things than that. So, I think I think that's a big one. I, th I mean, there's obviously mm. the whole never give up aspect, like that's 
you know, because because YouTube is hard, bro. Like YouTube is difficult. There's people who sometimes don't even blow up until they make channel ch the video, 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 and you have to figure out you have to figure out something to pull from. You have to right. love it. And if you don't love right. it, and this is going to be hard days at the office. If you don't love it, money is not going to – money can be your driver once you start making it. But before then, you better have something else that you like about it. So if you're going to be covering video games, you better be a gamer. If you're going to be covering right. makeup, you better be passionate about makeup, whatever it is. Facts. So I think I think that's a big one for me anyways. Is there anything that you think might – from Dragon Ball or from – well, anime is different, but honestly, overall? Honestly, bro, that – that uh that forgiveness one is tough i didn't even think about it from that perspective because i think we we always look at it as like a, a shonen trope right where it's like oh right. you can kill somebody and then but it's like but, but if, if it were real it, if you look at it under the surface of that though they're forgiving them for for like it's a forgiveness thing and i didn't even look at it from that perspective that's actually super deep bro like that's actually really dope well, one of the great moments, and I'm going to probably do a whole video about this at some point. One of the great moments in Dragon Ball Z that I think is very underrated, uh, because I don't think people really understand this, is the scene when they're fighting Kid Buu, pure Buu, and they make the wish to resurrect the good people that were killed by Buu, and Vegeta's halo disappears, and Goku mm. looks at him and goes, your halo's gone. And Vegeta was like, mm. I'm alive again? That's mm. one of the biggest, that is one of the biggest moments. That's probably wow. the moment for that Vegeta character because the dragon god, because the dragons are gods in Dragon Ball, even though they're not like gods in the way that we perceive, it's still a dragon god, was in tune enough to forgive Vegeta for all his mm. sins because Vegeta not only sacrificed himself against Majin Buu atoning for his sins, mm. but also came back and tried to help fight him again alongside Goku. Right. And that's a deep moment, bro, because mm. Vegeta's been pretty much a prick the entire, even when he was a good guy, he was a prick. But like, that was the moment where the dragon God was kind of, it was very Christ-like, bro. When you think about it, it's very right. new Testament where it's like the dragon God is telling us like, Vegeta, this is a different Vegeta. And it's only for a moment where Goku's like, your halo's gone. He's like, it is. And they get right back to fighting again. It's a very small right. moment, but it's, it's, that's a powerful one right there. That is. I didn't even think of it that way either. Like, this is, this is what I mean. Like, you being so in tune with the series and having, having, a different perspective of it than just the surface level viewer. Uh, this is the type of stuff that's exciting. You know what I'm saying? It's me saying being able that's to what pull, excites me. Pulling these things out of it and be like, man, like this. And then how do we use it? You know what I'm saying? How do we use that message? And that's why to me, anime has this, this nice uh, way of delivering things to us in a package to where it's like, Oh, this is awesome. It's not beating us over the head with a message, but the message is there. You just, right, it's there. It's like it is. When you're ready to receive the message though, it'll show itself to you. It's like it's a very it's it's a really awesome way of of packaging it. Um but Actually, you know bro, what you need to I, do, bro? Go back to up? Japan. Go back to Japan like mm -hmm. soon. Like in the next yep. couple of weeks and watch Godzilla minus one. Do that. Go, go in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Brother, they they have subtitled showings in Japan. That's a first. Oh, wow. I can't bro, I cannot remember wow. a movie, a Japanese movie with English subs. They have some of them in Japan. You should go. You should go. Wow. I'm, you should yo, go. Okay. I'm not, I got to talk my girlfriend in because we're expecting a baby in May. So. Oh, no, first. you def. No, now you have to go. <laughs> Now you have to go. If you if you have gotta, if you I, have, I gotta try. A, I gotta try to convince her for that one. Like, hey, I'm gonna leave, <laughs> bro. Listen, no, 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 no. Not I'm gonna leave. We're gonna leave because if you've got, first of all, congratulations. Secondly, you, if bro, you've got it. a family, if you've got a girl and a kid, bro, there's no way that you won't walk out of that movie without tears in your eyes. There's just no way. There's there's there's, there's oh, no wow. way. I'm gonna put it to you like this. Every single person I've shown that movie to or I've told to go see it, whether it be uh, 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 my age, older, younger, male, female, or anything else, two of them have left the theater without tears. Everybody else has, has, has either been bawling, crying, Every person or that I've heard sobbing that in the car. The same thing. 
Everybody I'm keeps saying you, that movie is fantastic. So that that uh, is the greatest movie of this century, bro. Since the year two thousand, oh, wow. I'm 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 dead ass, bro. Since the year two thousand, that might be the best movie I've ever seen. I've never had a movie hit me like that. Sheesh. I mean, you heard it here first. Geekdom's uh his well, his I, rave review. Well, it wasn't here first. I've been talking about this movie for two months, bro. I've been I've been obsessing <laughs> over it, bro. So yeah, but it's great. Bro, I appreciate you being here, bro. Thank you so much for taking your time, bro, and and divulging Always. this information and and helping people kind of get some wisdom out of this show and and your journey. It's been awesome. Obviously, continuing your success on the platform as well, and being that beacon in the Dragon Ball community and staying as consistent as you've been has been it's been remarkable, man. I I, I commend hard. you for your effort, bro. It's I, hard. I, I it really is. It. But it, but it, but the truth is, bro. I'm being honest. I do love the job, and it's not even the money. It's it's the fact that when you're a content creator, the best part about it is you do have you can make your own hours. So I genuinely work hard, but I like the fact that I can work 14 hours straight to get a video done, and then just take the next day off. Whereas if you're working mm-hmm. a nine to five. You have to be at work for those hours. And like, so like if you're taking a trip, like for example, Japan, you can plan out your videos for that week where you're not going to be around. Right. Like that is the best thing about YouTuber or Twitch. That stuff, is, is you, you can make your own hours. And I like that. So yeah, for sure. And is there anything that you want to um, let people know that might be coming up to check out on your channel? Well, the good news is that after 2023 was maybe the worst year for Dragon Ball that we've ever had. Nothing happened, bro. The manga was dead. Now the manga is picking up steam again. So uh, Mm. I will be covering that. But I do have a lot of big I do have a lot of bigger videos I'm working on. But those are probably not going to drop till April or May because we're in that first quarter of the year. So it's not really. But I am. I got this huge huge 25 minute Beerus video that I that I recorded yesterday. Sick. That's going to take a while, but it's all about how Beerus's power keeps being inconsistent because they keep lying to us <laughs> about how strong he is. And they keep lying, bro. Like remember Goku surpassed him like five times already. Oh no, 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 no he really hasn't. And that the video is about that. <laughs> so, but that's coming down the road. I can't even give you a date on that right now. I'm just covering the manga and working on other things kind of in the background for later. So there you go. Dope. But thank we'll you for the again. plug. Thank you, bro. Yeah, thank you so much for being here, bro. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again, man. Yes, I'll, I'm always down. Just hit me up and we'll do it. I'm Hell. always down. I'm Hell always yeah. down to working with you, bro. It's always a good time. Hell yeah.